So this is the scenario. If you look at the case study, um, you are two users. You're going to have a user and a manager. Now imagine this is a, a, a shopping situation. So you're in a retail organisation, either behind a fruit shop, a snack shop, any kind of shop. And we're going to be building this EPOS application here. <clears throat> now the way in which it's going to be used, I'll describe the usage of it. And this will give you an understanding of how it's going to be used. And then you can read the requirements document, which is inside Moodle, to get more details from there. So customers approach the desk. So it's not an EPOS system where um, you self-check. It's not a self-checkout system. There's no logins of individual customers or buyers. Their logins are by shop staff, <clears throat> either by a user, a sales assistant, person or the manager. Managers can add accounts in for users. So I will set up a user, let's say this user is called Bob. So as a manager, I will come in, create an account for Bob. Bob will then log in to the system <clears throat> and from the, the screens of the system, they will be able to choose the products which the customer wants to buy. So this customer here, for example, might come along and decide to buy one, two, three items. So Bob here will choose those three items. As he's selecting those items on his screen, they should come up as a running total on some area on the user interface. And then right at the end, once the whole thing's been completed, the total cost of the customer's order will be saved to the database. Now, it will go into the database on a table which will contain Bob's employee ID. So his ID might be 101. So against 101, as a record inside the database, he will have the total cost of what this person purchased. That's the only thing you need to log in the database. Just the total cost of what the customer bought and so on. So 101, three pounds 80, 101, two pounds. And this will go on for the full day that this person is making these, serving these customers. And it's a day to day thing. So it's an EPOS system that doesn't save the date, doesn't save the individual items that are being purchased, just a total cost of what the customer has decided to buy. That's the only thing that gets saved. Now, halfway through this, you might have this person who looks a bit odd. Um, this person might come along and decide to be giving you their order and suddenly they receive a phone call. It's their doctor telling them they've got to self-isolate. <laughs> So in that case, there needs to be an option to cancel the order. So as this person is typing stuff up, there should be a means of cancellations of the order within there. Now it is a day-to-day -day system. So this guy, Bob, comes in. <coughs> he should be able to log in <coughs> and also view his own details. So Bob can come in. I can say oh, my first name, last name, my employee ID, my password. I should be allowed to change my password. And then at the end of the day, after he's served so many customers, we're looking at reports. So Bob wants to be able to see the minimum order, the maximum order, or the highest order, highest value of the sale, the average takings, total takings, and also how many customers Bob served. So total customers and total takings. This forms the report. This forms the report for the whole system. So Bob serves so many customers, their final sale value has been saved. In the database, using the data that's in the database, there should be a feature on your application which brings out the minimum, the maximum, average total customer served and total takings. 
That's for individuals. Now these are known as user agents. So we've called these guys user agents. And there will be systems in there for adding those users. When a manager logs in, manager should be able to log in. And first of all, they should be allowed to reset the database. So at the end of the day, managers can reset, which will simply delete the table which we've set up to record sales. There will be a table that saves all the sales. There will be a table that saves all the users. Users will be in the database. Products will also be in the database. So that's three tables you're looking at. Users to hold users, products to hold the products, and the sales during the day. Is user the Bob? Yeah. Users Bob or whoever it is that you've got set up. Now you'll also be creating the CRUD features for users and CRUD features for products in the database. So that's two tables and these will only be viewed by the manager. So when the manager logs in, they'll see different sections. This is your hiding and showing of the tabs inside the application. So you'll hide and show certain parts of the application and some parts will be visible to the system. Let's have a look at the requirement document. Just make sure I've not missed anything. So two types of users, user agent and manager, login screen, so you need a login system. You can reuse, <coughs> if you've used logins in previous applications, just reuse the code that you've got for that. Reuse the tables, reuse the structure, that whole thing can just be tacked on. Don't reinvent anything that you haven't um, come across here before. So most of this should be okay to work on using previous code that you've created. Users should be able to view their account details. So security users and then manager only features. <coughs> Managers should be allowed to create, update, delete users and products. Restart the system, deleting all the sales data from the application as well. And then the reporting features, basic requirements here then Minimum of nine products you'll offer. That's all you need. You could have more. You could have them dynamic. If you wanted to go and look at dynamic creation of buttons, then dynamically, programmatically build an array of buttons to display on the screen. Um, I think maybe a few students last year did this. It does involve you doing a lot of research and trying to understand instead of using the GUI. Um, the requirement for this assessment is that you only need nine products. If you decided to create your shopping screen using a drop-down combo box, that might make it easier for you to add the products. It's not the great experience for the users, of course, um, because then what we, you would have is, instead of buttons, you just have a drop-down combo box with maybe... Um, didn't pick up on the quantities here. So quantities could go up at the top, one, two, Three, so buttons for the quantity. So if I was to choose five bananas, for example, I would tap the five button, then the bananas button, that would get added to my list, and so on. If it was a drop-down combo box, you would choose the product from the drop-down. Enter the quantities, add to shopping cart. Once they're all added in, there should be an option here to check out. So the checkout is the bit that transacts and places that transaction into the database. So check out to cancel, list of the items, running total of the order of that individual customer has got to be on the screen. You're allowed to cancel orders, only the final sale gets saved to the database. Now this also involves you implementing these two algorithms, which I understand you've already created something like this in foundations, programming foundations. Is that correct? Minimum, maximum, average. Now what that lends itself to is a separate class created just to do the calculations for us. Um, so a class called reports, for example, will contain methods 
reports pass in an array list of all the transactions. All the transaction goes into the array list and this class would then calculate lowest calc, lowest calc, highest average. These just become methods inside the class then for, for the reporting. So here's an example. User Bezos logs into the system, serves 10 customers. This is their 10 value items, the total cost sale. And this is what you're displaying on the screen as an example for those customers. Total serve, sales takings, average sale cost, minimum that and maximum. This is not saved in the database. This is a report that you'll generate on your screen. These numbers get saved in the database. These numbers are saved in the sales table. Okay, so in addition to what we have here, this is the last parts of the application. So stage one is the design. That's what we work on today. We'll use Balsamic. Balsamic is a wire framing tool where we will create using, uh, this is me fired up, Balsamic. If I go into containers, from containers, I can drag a window icon. So start off with a window. Give it a good size. You can add on your wee icons at the sides there if you want. And then from here, because it's going to be a tabbed view, um, you can bring in the tab, the tabs, give it the appropriate number of tabs. And then onto the tabs, we can then drop on your buttons and combo boxes and so on um, that you want on here. Okay, so once you get an idea, a hang of how to use this, this is what we're using. It's mostly drag and drop, building up screens, and you'll have multiple screens made up. So that's one screen, next screen, and all your screens should capture the features that you're going to present ultimately to the user. So a login would be a container that sits on top of this, for example. The reporting will be on a separate tab. The manager deleting the data, separate tab. So first of all, it's a full mock-up. And this is where you're analyzing the requirements. You're coming up with a design. I'm the customer. You're going to show me your design. I'm going to look at your design, make sure it matches all the requirements. And also it should, once you've designed it, built it, you're going to test it. You're going to run test cases on it. The test cases are all inside this document as well at the bottom. This, this is the minimum, the minimum that you need to have in the application. User login, manager login. Select a quantity, then a product. Add it to the, to the basket. Add products to the order. Item details shown up synchronously. So as you're choosing the products, add those, show the list the price. Sales total updated, user reports updated, so a different tab for reports you maybe have. Um, so it'll be a tab for doing the actual shopping, a tab for showing the reports, a tab for maybe my user details, where I can change my password. If it's managers logged in, they'll have a tab for CRUD on users, a tab for CRUD on products. And then the checkout, clearing of the order and viewing of the reports. Now notice here that the CRUD on users and CRUD on products is not here. It's still, if you have, as a minimum, if you have the users and you decide initially to build the application using hard-coded products, that's fine. We'll see how far we get towards the end of the block. And if you have not managed to add the products, we can leave the products out at that stage. So as long as you've got CRUD on users, that's sufficient where products are just hard-coded in to your database. Now, there is a sample database structure, which I give you. So this document, this gets created, and then the last part is the testing and deploying, where you'll run the application as an independent application out with NetBeans. So if you want to create an executable jar file, you go into NetBeans and select Clean Build, that creates a folder for you inside a dist fol folder, D-I-S-T, for distributable. And you take those files 
bring in your database that needs to be brought in and that will run independently. So the build, design, create it, build it. Once you've built it, fill in this document, the testing sheet, and usability testing is the last thing you then need to do. So this document, again, inside the application is the usability test. So you've got to create a usability test with at least five questions in it, at least five, and then ask three of your colleagues to come along and test your system and give you feedback. They just need to give you verbal feedback or if you've got a checklist, you can put a checklist in. And then you will create recommendations based on your usability test. So here's one as an example. It's not related to this application, but if it was a drawing application you were creating, these are the five questions that were given to my test candidates. And they tapped in something, gave me some feedback, and then at the end of this, I will take their feedback forms and create a short report. So that report forms your usability test, where you have a recommendation. They might say, if you decided to go with a combo box, they might say the combo box is um, easy to use, but it's, I can't really use it when I'm serving customers fast. Buttons would be quicker, be quicker tapping buttons than going using the mouse and selecting stuff. And, um, you could create your front screen, the shopping screen, using option buttons or radio buttons or check boxes. You decide how you want the interface to be created. That might come back to you in usability tests as something which is not good. But if that's the way you did it, then that's fine. Okay, so this is the application. This is the requirements that you'll read through. Today, we're simply creating a balsamic based design for this. All okay with that? Any questions? Are we supposed to connect the code with the balsamic interface? No, balsamic is independent. independent. Complete, you just design it. Once you've designed it in balsamic, turn it into a PDF. There's an export option. Export as PDF, then upload to me inside Moodle. There's a link there to upload the balsamic designs in Moodle. I will look at the designs and make sure that there's everything there that matches the requirements. I might also talk to you if you've got something obscure in there that doesn't really make sense to me and um, to see how you're going to implement that in your application. If you're happy doing it, um, um, you can go for an all singing, all dancing ecosystem. But and you can get through those test cases that